turnout um, as of 5 p.m. Korea time or about an hour ago, it was at 52.2%. Now, uh, that figure uh, includes the more than 11 percent of eligible voters who cast ballots in early voting late last week. Back in 2010, the final voter turnout was 54.5 percent. We we're just seconds away from the closing of the polls at 6 p.m. So it's a highly charged time right now. Right. It must be a nail-biting time for the two main camps. Uh, we are seeing live feeds from the ruling party on the left, ruling Kennedy Party, and on the right at the new Politics Alliance for Democracy, the main opposition. Now, this time around, it was a really neck-and-neck -neck race between the two camps, especially this elections coming, you know, about three weeks or so, or seven weeks, rather, uh, after the ferry disaster. And this could be a, a referendum or a vote of confidence for the Puck administration. And we're literally seconds away from the exit polls, early exit polls being released, and we are waiting for that. And we we are seeing a floor leader of the Kennedy Party, Iwan Gu, there, along with the rest of the party leadership. And on the right hand side, of course, his counterpart, Park Yong Sun, the floor leader of the New Politics Alliance for Democracy. And of course, Chung Dong Yan, who's uh, a long time Democratic Party leader. He has been there sitting and waiting for those early exit polls. Right, we can feel their heart throbbing all the way from here. I expect to see more of a a sea of red and blue, but uh, they're not exactly entirely outfitted with that primary color today here. Uh, regardless, we, we might have some confusion in terms of the the numbers we're going to provide on our screen, right, in terms of red and blue? Right, right. And as for the early exit polls, we have one for the Seoul mayoral position where uh, Park won sin the incumbent Seoul mayor, has a lead of 54.5% over uh, Chung Mong Jun. He is the candidate from the ruling Kennedy Party at 44.7%. So that is a little bit of a lead for the power of the Park won sin But however, we are not seeing much um, as for the expression changes by the campus is being cautious. <laughs> it's too soon for them to celebrate. Right. As for Gyeonggi province, that's another area that's been a highly neck and neck race and highly uh, heated battlefield. There we have a lead by Kim Jin Pyo again also uh, the main opposition camp with 51 percent. However, just two percentage points lower, 49 percent at Nam Gyeong Pil has at 49 percent. As for Incheon, Incheon is of course a city uh, west of Seoul and it has a uh, a very, very tight very race. Very close margin right. of error between the two. Right, 49.9 percent for the Kennedy Party mm -hmm. uh, and 49.1 for Song Young -gil, uh, for Song Young Gil of the main opposition camp. So a very tight race there within, I say, within a margin of error so that is there however um, as for we have other kinds of um, exit polls coming out in terms of uh, Chungcheong Bukdo. Chungcheong Bukdo is an area that has been a, considered as a swing vote region here in Korea and there we have a lead by Yoon Jin Sik ruling Kennedy Party Yoon Jin Sik at 50.3 percent and Yi Jung uh, from the uh, NPD, 48.2 percent. Of course, Busan has always been a strong field, a strong battlefield or a strong hold by the ruling Kennedy Party. However, this time around, it was a little bit of a very interesting race. There we have uh, ruling Kennedy Party's Seo byung -su with a lead of 51.8 percent. And Oh ga -dun, of course, he is an independent. However, with party color, he has a 48.2 percent. So again, a neck and neck race there within the margin right, of but error. A lot of fans support that we had for Oh -dun, but surprisingly, he does not have the advantage at the moment. However, these are not the final numbers. These are early exit polls conducted by Korea's three major broadcasters, namely KBS, NBC, and SBS. So these are early exit polls. Now, in terms of uh, uh, Busan, we had Ogadon's lead, uh, actually, in, excuse me, Sabyeongsu's lead, and uh, Sabyeongsu and Ogadon in neck and neck race. Over in Tegu, Daniel. We have uh, Hwan Young-jin uh, leading the way from Senri Party. They're the leading uh, party, ruling party. That is 55.6% quite ahead, uh, over 41.5% held by 
Kim Bo Gyum of, uh, for New Politics Alliance for Democracy, or NPAD. So uh, that seems like a very red victory there for the Tenri Party. In right, but, but then again, you know, we must remember that this mm -hmm. is also within a margin of error, right. almost close to it. And because the other races are so neck and neck, this kind of seems like it's a big lead. However, you know, this is, right. you know, compared to conventional elections. That's why you see people leaving their seats and not really being, uh, showing any expressions or emotions at the moment. Right, I think uh, both camps are remaining cautious ahead of um, the the results, and they are both pretty cautious about you know showing their expression whether they are feeling victorious right. or not. Long way to go until 11 p.m. Right now, we're only about six and a half minutes past the first early voting results. Right, so. and 11 p.m. of course is where um, is when actual firm uh, numbers, firm results will be uh, shaping up. Now, and there are roughly 3,900 regional posts up for grabs, so this will be a long night for this country. Now, in terms of the Seoul mayoral position, we also, again, we go over to our uh, Park won Sun, the incumbent Seoul mayor, having a lead of 54.5%, and Chung Mung Jun of the Senuri Party, the ruling party, 44.7%. The now, gap has been narrowed quite considerably. Everyone thought that uh, Park, uh, Park won Sun will get to defend his crown or throne quite comfortably, but we're seeing a little bit of shakiness and changes there at the moment. Right, and as for uh, Gyeonggi-do province, of course, that is another, it's actually the largest uh, populous uh, province here in Korea, and uh, it's it's been a ha heated battlefield, and there we have NPAD's uh, Kim Jin-pyo with the two percentage point lead, that's also a very narrow margin over Nam Gyeong Pil of the Senuri Party. Well, this varies with the opinion polls that we saw earlier on where Nam Gyeong Pil in fact had a little bit of a lead before, but you know, it, it looks different right. right now. One thing for sure is that these two are some of the most, uh, uh, I guess, career politicians, you might call them, uh, politicians to the bone. So they had some strong uh, campaigns going on despite uh, the little lapses or breaks in between because of the tragic ferry incident. Right, but. let's take a look at Gwangju. Gwangju is a traditional stronghold for the uh, Democratic Party. That's right. And however, there we're seeing NPAD's Yoon Jang-hyun having a lead of 59.2%. And very interestingly, Kang Eun-tae, he's an independent uh, with heavy, heavy opposition color because, of course, he was part of the NPAD until very recently. Technically, no one's exactly entirely 100% independent here in Korea. Well, uh, so Yoon Jang-un has a lead there. That's, a, that's the biggest lead, uh, biggest uh, difference or margin we have so far between right, two right. candidates. Right, right. As for Taejeon, Taejeon is one area where, you know, this is also considered a uh, swing a place, a region, and there we have a very, very narrow marginal lead by NPAD's candidate over Senate Party. However, that's too narrow of a margin, I would say. And it's still too early, as it's we would repeat over and over again at this point in our newscast. Right, and mind you that these early exit polls conducted by the three main broadcasters, they do not include the early voting, the early voting uh, count. So the 11.49 percent of the of the voters, of the early voting voters, their opinions have not been included in this, so we'll really have to wait right. and see until the votes are counted. It was a historic first, and it's going to make some historic impact in this election. Right, and uh, we're seeing Ulsan, city of Ulsan, uh, with a Senri party lead, a big lead there. I think that's a Biggest? pretty... Comfortable lead there <laughs> with over There's the, not um, going to be any upsets there, I think. Right, over a ju the Justice Party there. Now, let's move over to the administrative uh, capital of Sejong. That's another city that uh, that we have seen a very big voter turnout. One of the um, highest, I believe, right? Yes, one of the highest voter turnout areas. And there we're seeing NPAD's uh, Lee Chun Hee with a 56.1% uh, lead over Senate Party's Yu Han Shik with 43.9 percent. Now, um, voter turnout in, in this elections is, of course, a key factor, and it's always important to find out what the voter turnout is because it could have an impact on the final results. So let's now go over to our Yurian. She is standing by at the National Election Commission, which is where they keep track of the voter turnout across the nation. Leon, do we have the final numbers yet? 
Hi, Konyong Daniel.、Uh, the latest voter turnout, as we have as we have right now, is as of 5 p.m. local time, and that was, like you mentioned earlier, 52.2 percent. That is about three percentage points higher than 49.3 percent recorded at the same time during the last local election in、uh, in 2010. Now, the National Election Commission expects the voting rate to reach around 57 percent for this local election, making it the second highest rate for the past five. Local elections, but analysts had expected the voter turnout to hit an all-time local election high of 60 percent, since many took part in the two-day early voting period late last week. About 11.5 percent of all eligible voters cast early ballots. Now, an important factor in the result is the voter turnout for different age groups. Based on the early voting, those in the more liberal 20 and 30-year-old age bracket, and the more conservative voters in their 50s and older, had a similar Similar voter turnout of around 11 percent. That suggests people in their 40s will be the swing voters for this year's local election. Now, the election commission this year made extra efforts to increase election transparency. It is broadcasting the entire election process from the voting process until the final ballot count live on its homepage and major portal sites, including Naver and YouTube. Leah, no. When do we expect the results to come in? Actually. Well, the National Election Commission here expects to have a pretty good sense of who will win by 11 p.m. a local time tonight. But as there have been many neck-and-neck -neck races for this local、uh, election, they expect the final results to come in at around three to four hours past midnight. As for the final voter turnout for this local election, I will let you know as soon as I find out. The officials here say that will be at around 6:40 p.m. So I will、uh, keep you updated. I'm Yudian reporting live from the. National Election Commission. Now,、uh, the early exit polls, as widely expected, it's excruciatingly close in many, many of the regions within the margin of error. I tell you, and、uh, those are the exit poll results. Of course, it's just a prediction that the final、uh, call will be made after all of the votes have been counted. Now, as of now, we have、uh, five regions that are in favor of the ruling Senuri Party. Five in favor of the main opposition camp NPAD, and seven in a neck and neck race. So this must be a really、uh, excruciating time to be in one of those camps. A lot of politicians will be spending restless nights, bloodshot eyes, expected tomorrow morning celebrations and tears and tears of joy or I guess disappointment. Well, regardless, we have an expert joining us live in the studio to help us make sense of everything going on, especially the exit poll results. Dr. Hwang Jung Wook. Professor of Hanguk University,、uh, he's a professor of foreign studies there.、Uh, professor Huang, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let me make the correction, Professor,、uh, Professor of Hanguk University of Foreign Studies.、Yes. Keep confusing that. Right. All right. So、um, you saw the early exit polls. So rough numbers、um, there. However, neck and neck race in many many of the areas, and you also have the、uh, voter turnout rate.、Uh, first of all, what do you make out of the voter turnout rate? I think because the early voting led to such a high turnout, about 11.5 percent of the voters voted early. People hoped that that magical 60 percent threshold would be crossed, but now it's turning out that that is not the case. So some people are now saying that you know people who would have voted anyway voted just early, so that maybe the early voting had no real、uh, impact on the final results.、Um, we'll actually need to get, see the data on a more more disaggregated. Uh, level, but at at the, at the moment, it's a little disappointing that the voter turnout didn't turn out to be as high as one hoped. Well, you know, compared to other parts of our world, I believe Korea is actually not too bad in terms of voter turnout.、Uh, what what kind of changes were, I guess, the the X factors that motivated people to make more appearances in、uh, the voting this time in the local election? I believe there were some chunky incidents that led to this point, regardless of the campaigning、uh, by separate different parties, because. Actually, they had some time lost because of some very big national incidents. That's right. But overall, I think the early voting was very convenient for many people. I mean, you could just take literally any government-issued ID and literally walk into any government offices around the country and then just vote for your own district. Which I think,、uh, to my knowledge, that no, nowhere else in the world is that convenient. So Korea has done really well in terms of making the early voting as as convenient as possible. So convenience was the main factor in terms of driving and motivating people to quickly cast their ballots. I had some problems because the place where I had to go vote was on top of a hill. So.、Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was Sorry a bit of a discouragement for me. <laughs> and Daniel, of course, has a broken leg. Now, um, <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just a moment here. The, uh, of course, uh, here in Korea, education is a big, big factor. It's a, it's a concern for the minds of many. And, of course, that is why the uh, education superintendent's uh, position has been a, a, a big interest here in South Korea. And their early exit polls show that uh, the uh, NPAD's uh, Cho Hyun, he has a lead of 40.9 percent uh, to over Moon Young Min. He is the incumbent superintendent. He has a 30.8 percent. And there was a little bit of a, a controversial um, factor here and there in terms of the superintendent uh, race, but uh, that is how it is shaping up to be. Now, uh, Professor Huang, back to the uh, the elections and and the civil ferry. Of course, this these elections, local elections, uh, we. Have have the presidential election, the parliamentary elections here in South Korea, and normally the local elections aren't as interesting to the general public as is the first two. But uh, this time around, it was a little bit different because it was considered as a as a vote of uh, confidence for the Park administration uh, after the Seoul Ferry disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw the early exit polls, the figures. What, what's your take on it? I think the opposition party really wanted to turn this election into sort of a you know midterm, sort of early midterm uh, judgment call on the park administration. But looking at the voter turnout, it did, doesn't seem like that many people were angry. I mean, some people are calling the phenomenon of angry moms. The people, sort of, sort of the mothers in their 30s and 40s, uh, people who are the most upset over the Seoul ferry disaster. People thought that those folks will turn out in droves and really drive up the voter turnout. But looking at the numbers, it seems that that effect has been somewhat muted. All right, uh, you will, uh, we will join you again. Actually, you will be here throughout the newscast with us. But let's go over to um, a report by one of our reporters and how about how the citizens of Seoul are feeling about this elections. Of course, the race for mayor of the nation's biggest city comes down to two people, as we just saw, the incumbent and a multi-term lawmaker. Millions of Seoulites exercised their right to vote Wednesday. Our Kim Hyun-bin asked some of them what they were looking for in their mayor. Incumbent Seoul Mayor Park won soon and his ruling's Henry Party challenger Chung Mong Jun are the clear favorites to win this Wednesday. Both put forth a number of campaign pledges in the lead-up to Election Day. But the true question is, what do Seoul citizens want out of their mayor? I don't know who's going to win, but whoever it is, they should help out the younger generation and be a role model. The next mayor should let people be more active in his decision making. The most urgent thing is education. We should establish that first, then safety will follow. Some pointed out that government officials should take more responsibility. Compared to business executives, a lot of government officials lack a sense of responsibility and management skills. We need professionals to run this country. Safety issues in light of April's Tower Hole Ferry disaster were also of great concern. We want a mayor that takes citizens' opinions and develops our capital soul. Even after the Seoul Hole tragedy, our country has had to deal with other safety accidents. It's even scary to ride the subway these days. I hope the new mayor will make our city a safer place to live. People have high expectations for the next Seoul mayor. They expect whoever wins to follow through on their campaign pledges. And most importantly, make the capital city a safer place. Kim Hyun Bin, Arirat News. Now, uh, we saw at the beginning of this newscast uh, the live feeds from the two rival camps. First, let's go over to uh, the ruling Senate Party uh, headquarters. There, our Chi Myung Gil is standing by. Uh, Myung Gil, uh, what, uh, how does it look there? What is the ambience like there? Well, members of the Senate Party are watching the election results here at the Situation Room. A series of televisions have been set up in front of their seats. The ruling party's election commission has been holding meetings throughout the day, trying to figure out where the candidates hold the upper hand. Once confirmation comes in on the results, they will be reflected on the bulletin board, which sits beneath 17 pictures of the Senate candidates of a mayoral and provincial governor position. 
positions. This Henry Party's political heavyweights, Cheng Mongjun, this whole mayoral candidate, and Nam Gyeongpil, candidate for Gyeonggi-do province governor's seat, are not scheduled to appear here. They will monitor things at their respective camps. Well, Myung-gi, we had a historic event last week, uh, early voting, uh, highest in Korea's local election history. Uh, can we expect some make or break factor for the ruling incendiary party because of that? Well, it's too early to say whether the advanced voting system has hurt or played in favor of any party. But ruling party candidates have been asking voters for support for the President Park Geun-hye administration. Political analysts say the election results could very well shape the remaining three years and nine months of the president's time in office. Upbeat results would give Park momentum to proceed with political and economic reforms. A big defeat would likely force the presidential office of Chongade to carry out a wide range of reshuffle of the cabinet and other top level officials in an attempt to win back public confidence. This was Chimyongil reporting live from Senuri Party headquarters in Seoul. Well, uh, this local elections, of course, uh, it will be a litmus test for the President Park's administration following the ferry disaster. And right now, we actually, um, according to the early exit polls, uh, five regions out of the total have strong fold or uh, stronger uh, in favor for the ruling Senate Party, five for the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy, and seven in a excruciatingly neck and neck race. But now let's go over to our Kwon Soa. She is at the National Assembly where the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy has also just received the first exit polls. So um, what's the atmosphere there like? Hi, Ganyang Daniel. Now, although the uh, members and candidates of the New Politics Alliance for Democracy have been filling the seats, the front seats here at the NPAD Situation Room, as you probably saw before, there were no big reactions made. Now, I just saw, uh, I heard a few sounds of surprise and some nodding, but that was it. Now, uh, although the very first exit polls from major broadcasters have been released, as we know, they do not always reflect the actual results, and this is why the candidates and uh, members of the NPAD's reactions are reserved right now, but that's also due to the recent Sewol Ho ferry accident. As the party said, it won't be doing much cheering in these elections, and uh, there won't be any bouquets being handed over either. Now, the first members began an entering the National Assembly member building at uh, around 5.30, but uh, co-leaders Kim Han Gil and An Cheol Su have yet to arrive. Well, gasping, nodding, maybe a little bit of knee jerking. Sounds like an emotional response from the NPAD side there. Uh, what about the results of the exit polls? Is it near what they had expected, Soa? Well, Daniel, uh, just like the ruling Senuri Party, the NPADs uh, has said over the last days there is no telling on how the results will turn out, uh, as there were 10 to 11 swing regions. However, the NPAD was expecting uh, to win this whole mayoral race, as well as races in their traditional strongholds of Tolla Pukdo and Tolla Namdo province in the southwest of the country. And as we saw, the first exit poll suggest they have a big chance. Now, although the party had worried in the swing regions of Gyeonggi-do province, Incheon, Chungcheong province, and Gwangju. At this hour, it looks like they are leading in many of those, but we will have to see if elections turn out in the favor of the party in the following hours. Now, members had said that the votes of so-called angry moms and dads in their 40s would play a key role in the elections, as the party had been crit criticizing the government's handling of April's Sewol ferry accident. Now, I'll be back with more updates later here at the NPAD Situation Room when we get a clearer image of the election results. All right, we've seen uh, how each camp is reacting to the exit poll results. Uh, let's now turn to uh, Professor Huang for his view. Uh, what's your view on, that, on your take? Well, it seems that you know, people were saying that there were about five seats uh, out of the seven large localities that were up for elections. So, uh, depending on the news sources, there were some different breakdowns about which, which ones are too uh, close to call. And I think exit polls are basically reflecting that. Right now, the breakdown is 575. Five. So I think uh, you know, exit polls are not really uh, sh have shown that in the past week where we had a poll blackout, so we didn't, could not really tell how the, uh, the voter preferences have changed. It seems that 
of voter preferences have stayed fairly constant for the past week. All right, well, uh, we'll be back with you, but the polling stations are now closed and the counting of votes now begins. We go live to our Shin Zemin, who is standing by at one of the many ballot counting centers nationwide. Uh, this one in the Chungu district of Seoul. Zemin, have they started counting the votes there? Yes, Kanyang and Tanyal, as you just mentioned, the uh, more than one, uh, 13,000 polling stations nationwide closed just minutes ago. And as you can see behind me, dozens of people are on full standby just waiting for their ballots to arrive. Now the ballot boxes are on its way to the ballot uh, counting stations uh, located in each district. Now in terms of the uh, ballot arrival, the box arrival time, it'll vary according to the district, but the National Election Commission says that the counting will begin as early as 6.30 p.m. Korea time at 252 stations nationwide. And over 107,000 people are involved in the process. And for the first time ever in a local election, regular citizens are taking part in the vote counting process in a bid to boost transparency and reduce concerns of vote tapering, uh, tampering. Rather. And some changes have been made to the ballot counting procedure for this year's local elections. As some questions were raised during the 2012 presidential election, signaling some inconsistency in vote counting process. Now, the Election Commission is also using new ballot counting machines in some areas and employing a three step check system to minimize any possible mistakes. First, machines will separate some 400 ballots by candidate per minute with an accuracy of over 96 percent. And after that process, people will then manually count and recheck the ballots by hand for a second time. Then the counted ballots will uh, eventually go to the National Election Commission officials who are on site for one last check. And after all these steps are complete, the results of the vote count will be compiled by the National Election Commission. That's all for now, but I'll be here throughout the evening bringing you more updates on the ballot counting process. Reporting live from Chungu District here in Seoul, this has been Shin Zemin. All right, well, um, that was our Shin Tae Min, and uh, that's a wrap of our special coverage of the presidential election, or actually the um, local, local election, elections. excuse me, which could have ramifications actually Definitely. leading up to the next presidential race. Right? Uh, thank you, Professor Hwang Jung Woo, for joining us throughout this newscast. Thank and you. Um, please do come again for our next elections, perhaps the presidential one. And uh, that's a wrap for us. Let me just give you a brief wrap up of how the early exit polls have shown. We have that um, as for the Seoul mayoral race, uh, of course, the, the uh, incumbent Seoul mayor, Park Won-soon, has a lead of 54.5% over ruling Senate Party's Jung Mong jun 44.7%. In, in Gyeonggi-do province, the uh, governor position, of course, uh, we are seeing Nam Young pil ruling Senate Party Nam Young pil losing about two percentage points behind his NPAD counterpart. We have uh, five regions that are in favor of the ruling party, five for the main opposition, and seven in a neck-and-neck -neck race. All right, that is a wrap for us now, but uh, stay with Arirang News all throughout the night for this election coverage. Live from Seoul, I'm Lin Gonyo. And I'm Daniel Che. Thank you for staying with us. Sean, Sherry, and many of our hardworking reporters will be standing by to give you the latest. Whoever you voted, we wish that all your hope agenda comes true.